God bless you, church, this morning. We are blessed to be in the house of God. Another day that God has granted us. I am a firm believer that every time God allows us to walk through his doors, it is a blessing. It is an honor that we have to appreciate and honor as well. Because in other times, people would have to watch from the doors. They would leave their offerings and sacrifices at the door, and someone else would have to take their praise and their sacrifice before the Lord. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. I said, thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. He said, I don't want, it, I don't want you at a distance. I want you closer. Died on the cross of Calvary, that veil broken. He said, come on in. And today we sit in places that in other times we would not have been able to sit. But praise the Lord that I have a seat in his house. And we're happy and honored that God grants us that privilege. We're honored by the privilege that God granted us this weekend to share with the couples. How many couples were there with us, sir? Where the couples? Where the couples? Yes. Yes, a big hug to you guys. We were so blessed to be able to share with all of you and, uh, and to see what God is doing in the marriages. Uh, healthy marriage is a healthy family. Healthy family is a healthy community. Healthy community is a healthy church. That's why we're going to the root and working with the marriages so God can continue to heal the world through there. How many believe that? I'm blessed to uh, accompany somebody here today, and I'm blessed that I am accompanied here today as well. Somebody's accompanying me, and I'm accompanying somebody else because she came before me, so I cannot accompany her. And I, I am honored this morning that she allows me to accompany her. And it's my mom, Minerva Rios, a beautiful woman you see over there. On the 15th of this month, she turned 70. Yes. So when you walk by, say happy birthday. <laughs> and uh, I'm accompanied by another beautiful young woman. Uh, she, uh, she ministered this weekend, and I know she had a great time with the women and the couples this weekend, and uh, Dr. Reverend Diana rodriguez Yambo, <laughs> a beautiful young lady. Every day she still decides to walk next to me. I don't know why, but God is good. <laughs> My name is Reverend Julio Rios Valentin. Uh, we are the director and founder of Visionaries of Christ Ministries, receive greetings from our ministry and from our team. And uh, we want to share the word with you guys this morning. Let's open to the first book of John, chapter 3. We're going to be considering verses 1 and 2. The first book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. When you have it, you can say amen. Look around you. If someone doesn't have a Bible, share your word. If not, we got it on the screen. Yeah, we got it on the screen. Yes. As you open your Bible, uh, turn to your neighbor. Tell them I'm happy you're here this morning. Tell at least two people, look at them, tell them, I'm happy you're here this morning. We're happy. We have a saying at our church that the church is a garden, and the visitors are the flowers that decorate that garden. God bless the flowers that we have in the house today. How many say amen? Amen. amen. The book of first book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the church of God says, amen. Behold. What matter of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it didn't know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. Somebody say children of God. Children of God. I'll say it proud. Children of God. Children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Somebody say, the Father loves me. Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this seed. 
We shall sow it over this house, my God, believing, Lord Father God, that you will multiply and expand, Lord Father God. Father God, that it will be tools, Lord Father God, for our hearts, Lord Father God. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that it not just sit in our hearts, but as we leave here, Lord Father God, it prepares us, Lord Father God, to fulfill your will and to complete our ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I want to speak under the theme, the Father loves us. I think love is a very important topic to discuss nowadays. Uh, we see what just happened at the Lakewood Church. We see what's going on in the Middle East. We see what's going on uh, with the situation in the United States and so many different situations that are coming about where people are struggling, where people are looking for some stability, where people are yearning for something real. And in the midst of these times, we need to be reminded, the world needs to be reminded that love does exist. We need to remind the world that it is not a lie. We need to remind the world that through love there is still hope. The biggest problem or the biggest challenge that we see in this world is that love sometimes isn't genuine. It, it, it's expressed but not demonstrated. And love is not something that you express through words. Love is something that you manifest through actions. That's why when we speak to the couples, uh, I tell them, I'd rather have somebody in my life that never says they love me, but that every day I see their love through the way they treat me. John highlights this in such a way because he understands that today's love is distorted. People want to know God, but their definition of love stops them. They come to the church, they hear the worship, they like the environment, they like the atmosphere, they like the touch of the Holy Spirit. But when that moment comes to make that decision and they hear, Jesus loves you. Come on up, receive Christ, receive his love. You see, some of them put their brakes on. Why? Because love to some people is what caused their pain. Love is what broke them. Love is what hurt them. Love is what caused the scars that I carry. So although they enjoy the environment and they're drawn in by the spirit, but their heart is burdened by this word love because love reminds them of a situation in their life that caused them pain. So the definition of love has been distorted in their minds and when they hear it, instead of opening up, they shut down. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? That distortion of love needs to be clarified. And this is why John writes this. And he says, look at the type of love. Look at the love that God has given us. And it's funny because he uses the Greek word potapos, which means of what tribe, of what nature, of what class is this love? Because he's making it obvious that this is not the regular love that they know. Somebody say he loves differently. He lets them know. This is not any kind of love. If we had the literal translation of what he's trying to say, the literal translation from the Greek would be, look at this strange type of love that the Father is manifesting. Highlighting for the reader to know this love is different. Somebody say he loves different. See, this morning, I want you to know that maybe your definition of love might be a certain way, but God's love is different. And I know that some people may, may have misused that word out of context just to gain something from you. 
Because if we're going to talk about love, then we have to talk about philosophy. We have to go to Plato and Aristotle. Where they start to develop the four dimensions of love or the four levels of love. Estrorge, eros, phileo. It's interesting because estrorge, eros, and phileo, they are all loves that require a benefit. There are all loves that need something to give something. And that's what the problem is, that the, the world has experienced phileo, the world has experienced eros, the world has experienced strorge. But they haven't experienced agape love. They've experienced a love that only takes from them. But God loves differently. Come on, look at your neighbor, tell him he loves differently. These people said they loved us while there was a benefit. While you were giving them money, I love you. <laughs> while you were giving them a roof over their head, I love you. While they were extracting a benefit from you, they were... While they were taking from your body... But the minute you started to understand, I need to walk right. I need to live right. I need to change. Oh, I don't feel the same anymore. It's not that you don't feel the same anymore. It's that the benefit of your interest has stopped. How many times do people use, oh, if you love me, you would. That is a pretext to extract. And the threshold of hurt. And that's what people carry nowadays. And that's why it's so hard to receive. I, I was at a convention, uh, Assemblies of God, the international convention, and uh, our missionary from uh, India came through. And I'll never forget. He says, if everybody loves God, why isn't everybody saved? You ask anybody who wants to go to heaven. We ask anybody, you love God? I love God. And if they want to go to heaven and they love God, why are they not all saved? He said, it's simple. They love God, but they hate your representation. Nobody here with me right now? We got to talk some truths. Put your tray tables up and seats in the upright position. <laughs> We're going to go through some turbulence right now. But hold on, we're going to get on the other side. The representation of love and of God has been distorted. You are the only love that the world will see. So I got to be mindful of what I'm showing. Because some of us are guilty of that distortion. Some of us are responsible for that hurt. But when you look at God, God says, I don't love in eros, I don't love in phileo, I don't love in strode. Agape is the only love that gives and doesn't need something back. John 15, 13. He says, no greater love oh my God. has someone than one to lay down his life for his friend. When you look at the translation in the Greek, you won't find eros, you won't find strohe, you won't find phileo. It will be agape. Romans chapter 5. It says, but God demonstrates his own agape, love towards us. And while we were still sinners. While you were still messed up and dirty and tore down. See, people, people, some people walked out on us because we were messed up. Some people walked out on us because we were down. Some people walked out on us because we were dirty. No, when you clean up, then I come back in your life. But God says, no, no, this is my time. I'm going to show you. Let me show you my love. Let me roll up my sleeves huh, and let me get dirty with you and show you that I love you even now. Somebody say, he loves, he loves me. He 
loves us in a way that no one else has loved us. This is why I love the conversation between Jesus and Peter. <laughs> Peter, do you love me? What Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. Turns around again and says, Peter, do you love me? What Peter says, yes, Lord. Jesus asked the third time, Peter, do you love me? Something happens to Peter. Peter becomes saddened by it. Some people will tell you that he's saddened because of the repetition of it, the insistence of it. But this is why you must study the word of God. And enter into the profoundness of what's being said. Jesus says, now that we've taken the lesson on the four steps of love. In the Greek, in the Septuagint, this reads this way. Peter, do you agape me? And Peter says, yes, Lord. I phileo you. Look it up. I want you to go home and look this up. Jesus asks him again. Peter, do you agape me? Do you love me without reservation? And Peter says, yes, Lord. I phileo you. I like you for what you're giving me. The third time, and this burdened my heart when I learned this, Jesus says, Peter, do you at least phileo me? If you're not going to love me unconditionally, he says, can you still love me for what I give? And that's when Peter knew that he was walking around with Jesus, not for who Jesus was, but what he could extract from Jesus. How many of us are in a phileo relationship with God? Oh, I love, I ask right now, how many love God? Look this way, look this way, look this way, look this way. <laughs> it's about to get started. Oh, I love God. Then why, when the pressures of life come to you, you stop coming? Oh, I love God. But then why, when things go wrong, your prayer life goes down, your praise goes down, your worship goes away? Amen. If I love God, why is God paying for what somebody else did for me? Somebody here? Oh, I don't go to church because they, there's thousands of church. You go somewhere else. God didn't do anything. But God seems to pay for what somebody else did for us. If I love God, I got to think like David thought. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. As a man that understands it doesn't matter what I'm going through. If I got to walk in the dark, God, we're walking together. Love allows you to walk through the storm. Love allows you to walk through the tribulation. Love allows you to walk through the financial struggles. God, I'm still here. I got tears in my eyes, but I'm still here. I'm dragging right now, but I'm still here. It's not what I say. It's what I manifest. Is there somebody here with me this morning? I have to examine what type of love I'm giving God. Because we're giving God something we don't accept. If someone didn't treat you in the same dimension of love that you treat them, what's going to happen? We're going to work out. It's not going to work out. So I got to examine myself this morning. Am I giving God the love that he deserves from me? Because the Father loves me. There is no question that he loves you. There is no question that he loves differently. And I don't care what they've done before. I'm here to tell you love does exist in the Father. 
Turn to your neighbor, tell him love does exist in God. I don't care what your husband did to you. I don't care what your wife did to you. I don't care what your kids have done to you. I don't care what your parents have done to you. I don't care what the world has done to you. There is a love that is real. There is a love that changes hearts. There is a love that heals. There is a love that transforms. You don't have to carry that sadness anymore. You don't have to carry that pain anymore. You can let it go today. Oh, somebody here with me right now? Today I can bring it to the altar and say, God, the ones that hurt me, uh, I, I carry it with me, but I leave it before your altar. I turn away my definition of love to grab onto your type of love. Is there somebody receiving this word right now? John doesn't only tell us that he loves differently, but he uses the word paiter to talk about the paternal love. Not only does he love differently, but he gives the category of love, the platform in which he loves and he loves as a father. This is something that the men of this generation need to embrace. The paternal figure in the home, in the church, in the community. God steps into it. And the reason he presents it as a father is because he wants to let them know that they're not alone. I'm here to cover you. Because the true men of God cover. The true men of God protect. The true men of God support. So that's why he presents himself in that way, because he knows the definition of what it is to be a man of God and a father of the home. He says, the father loves you differently. And there are three things that the father, there's three ways that the father loves, there's three ways that the father gives himself to us, and I want to share with you this morning. The first thing is, the father gave you life. Somebody say, he gave me life. I know in your mind, you're starting to think, well, no, mommy and daddy gave me life. And biologically speaking, well, I was conceived by my parents. Let me explain something to you. Technology and science has advanced so much nowadays. It could explain to you the trimesters and the, and the different changes within a woman's womb. They can tell you uh, how the baby shifts and changes and the growth of the muscles and the tendons and the blood. And, but there is no doctor in the world. There is no doctor in the world that can explain to you how that heart begins to beat. And out of nowhere, all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. That wasn't mommy. That wasn't daddy. In that moment, the spirit of God comes into this womb and God said this is my child right now oh no come on somebody if you're breathing right now it's because the father gave you breath if you're breathing right now it's because the father put that heart to beat if you're breathing right now you are not a mistake they didn't plan you, but the Father had you in his book. They didn't know you were coming, but God said he's on his way. They didn't know what was happening, but he said she's coming around the corner. Why? Because the Father said, I will give her life. I will give him life. Somebody say, the Father gave me life. I need to embrace the fact. That the father was the one that gave me life. If I exist, it's because he put me to exist. Therefore, it doesn't matter what the world has said. And it doesn't matter what their opinion is. Today, we erase those lies. Today, we erase those doubts. I'm here for a reason. Tell somebody, tell them, I'm here for a reason. Now, tell them, you're here for a reason, too. Help me preach this morning. Remind them you're here for a reason. There is a purpose for your life. Pastor, but I'm going through something. There is a purpose for your life. The Father gave your life and the Father doesn't waste time. He is intentional. He knows what he's doing. He was the one that has me breathing today. And although I go through the situations I go through and people have done the things they have done for me, but I'm still here. 
Somebody say, I'm still here. I'm still here. The devil's throwing everything he can, and I'm still here. Why? Because the God, the Father gave me life, and I'm not leaving this world until the Father says I'm done doing what I came to do. Somebody here right now? So depression, you step out of my way because the Father gave me life. Loneliness, you step out of my way because the Father gave me life. Doubt, you get out of my way because the Father gave me life. I got no time for your anxiety. I got no time for you to delay who I am. I will not walk out of here confused anymore. I am a child of the Father because the Father gave me a life. Somebody lift up their hands and say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Psalms 139, verses 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you. Can you give him praise? I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Where are that marvelous works? Where's the marvelous work? You are a marvelous work. You lift up your hands. You praise God. You marvelous work. Come on. Those creations of God. You are marvelous work. And my soul knows it well. That is the Father speaking to you this morning, telling you, I made you marvelous. Leave here, hashtag, I am marvelous. I am my Father's child. We got to wake up to that idea because the world wants to tear us down and people want to see us down. And sometimes our emotions, notice that he says, he doesn't say my heart knows it well. He says my soul. Why? Because the soul comes from the Father. The flesh dies, but the soul returns to God, to the Father. That's why he doesn't talk to his emotions. He says, my soul, the essence of who the Father made me, knows it beyond what I'm thinking, beyond what I'm feeling. My soul knows I am a marvelous work. Somebody say amen. amen. The second thing. The father says and the father does is the father is committed to the life that he imparts. God is committed with you. God is committed to the life that he gave you. He's committed to your success. It shakes me. The other day I was watching the news. And this... Uh, this woman showed up at her job on a day that the factory was closed. And she went to the dumpster, opened up the dumpster, threw a black plastic bag in the dumpster and left. The security guard was watching. He found it weird. Why would she be there on a day that the company's closed and using the company dumpster? So he went to the dumpster to see what was it that she had thrown out. He opens up the dumps and pulls out the bag. There's a baby with the umbilical cord still attached. They tracked her down. She didn't have time for a baby now. That is the world that we live in. But God is committed to life. I think that is one of the greatest examples that when she threw him out, God says, I gave you life and I'm going to grab you right there. Why? Because the father was committed to the life that he gave. And I want you to understand that God is committed to your life. John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and that that life be more abundantly. Oh, my God. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. The world want to throw us out. Sin 
and the devil wanted us to be down, but they said, we need a redeemer. He said, no, no, my child is not going to die. My child will not pay the price. I will die for my child. The father is so committed. Listen, no one has moved God how you move God. Oh, uh, you knew what I was telling you right now. Nobody has moved God the way you move God. Because until that moment that we needed a redeemer, he was on his throne immovable. But then he said, we need a redeemer. We need somebody to die. Somebody has to die on the cross. And they said, for the joy placed before him. <laughs> what was the joy placed before him? It was a picture of you. She needs a redeemer. And he started to take off his crown. Whew. He needs a redeemer. And he started to take off his royal robes. Oh, my God. It says that he didn't look at his royalness, uh, something to hold on to. But he let go of it. Why? Because he's a responsible father. If somebody has to die, my child will not die. I will die for you, my God, Lord Jesus. You move God the way nobody else has moved God. He left his throne because of you. You are important in the kingdom. Touch your neighbor. Tell him you're important in the kingdom. God moves for us. Isaiah 49, 15 says, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion of the son of her womb? Surely I tell you that she may forget, yet I will never forget you, for I have you carved in the palms of my hands. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody got to give him praise this morning. I remember a story my sister told me. She was looking in the mirror, and she was looking at her stretch marks from her birth. And she's like, oh, my God, look at how ugly this looks. Her husband walks into the room and says, honey, what's wrong? She's like, oh, honey, don't look. These stretch marks are ugly. He kneels down. He gives her a kiss on her stretch marks. And he says, honey, those are the signs of your victory. Oh, no, 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 no. See, most people look at their scars in pain. And most people look at their scars as hurt. But God looks at his scars and he says, these are the signs of my victory for my children. He looks at his hands and says, this is victory. He looks at his side and he says, this is victory. He looks at his feet and he says, this is victory. Why? Because I did it for my child. I did it for my son. I did it for my daughter. Where are the sons and daughters of God? Oh, can you praise him? Can you praise him this morning? Spirit of God, to know that the creator of this world looks at his cars and he doesn't complain. He says, I did it for my child. I did it for my son. I did it for my daughter. Why? Because he is committed with the life that he imparts. Look at what 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 says. If we were unfaithful, he remains. He remains. He remains. Faithful. The interesting part is the second half of this verse. He says, he cannot deny himself. And most people would say, well, the, the word says the heaven and the earth will pass, but my word will not pass. I tell you, this is a little bit more profound than that. You ever seen somebody's kid walk into a room? Parents not there, but you look at the kid, and you're like, that's this, this kind of, hmm, that's this guy, child. <laughs> Parents are nowhere to be found. And you look at that kid, and hmm, that's, my, my little sister has a daughter, her second daughter. And I tell her, I says, are you lying to us? I said, they perfected cloning. I said, Emery, Emery's a clone. Don't play with me. I take a picture of my little sister when she was a baby. I put a picture of Emery right next to her, and you swear it's the same child. I said, that's a clone. Mm -mm, don't play. Walk in the room. You don't have to ask whose kid that is. Go get this kid's mother. You know who it is. Because you see them, 
and you know who they belong to. So he, the father says that although we are unfaithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny. The minute he wants to turn around, he sees you and he sees him. How can I, how can I turn my back on him? Look at him. He looks just like me. How can I turn my back on her? Look at her. She looks just like me. How can I turn my back on my child? They, they, they look like me. Even though they got me mad, even though they got me upset, that's still my child. I can't deny myself. I can't walk out on them. I can't turn my back. That's God when he looks at you. He says, no, I will not abandon you. He cannot deny himself. Why? Because he sees himself in you. Oh, if I were you, I'd say thank you, Lord. I would say thank you, Lord. His blood is over us. This is my child. That's why some people are like, well, your son is so bad, but it's still my child. Oh, your son is horrible, but it's still my child. And it doesn't matter how bad that child is, no matter what that child has done, that parent will go to blows with anybody. The good parents. Let me clarify that because today we have people having kids but not being parents. But that's a family conference. I'm not going into that right now. <laughs> the good parents, the responsible parents. That's why he says, I am the good shepherd. Nah, let's, that's a whole other sermon. Let's come back here. His love goes beyond your mistakes. His love goes beyond your mess. How many got a mess? Mm. God says, even in your mess, you're still my child. He is committed to that life. Don't give up now. Don't walk away now. He is the only good thing we have in this life. Number three, and I close. I know. I got to get out of here. Not only does the Father give you life, not only does he commit to that life, the Father transmits what's necessary. John 14, verse 15 says, if you love Agapa, me, he sets a standard. That's why I get bothered when people say, oh, I have my own relationship. I said this yesterday. I'll say it again. I'm tired of a generation that wants to define how you're going to love God. Well, I have my own relationship with God. You know what you just told me? You have no relationship with God. You know Why? Because the Bible clearly says this is not up to personal interpretation. And when you have to add that context, oh, I have my own relationship with God, that means you don't follow his relationship. So you have no relationship. See, we got to talk about these things clearly. Because we have a generation trying to distort these ideas and, and a lot of people embracing them. No, 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 no. Mm. We're not going to step out on the Father just because you think it should be different. That's why John 14, verse 15, he says, if you agape me. Not phileo, not strode, not eros. If you agape me. Keep. My commandments. Mm. It's not what you know, it's what you do. The devil knows the word. That don't mean nothing. You just cite verse all you want. Nowadays, everybody want to thank God on TV. You seen them? Just finished cursing, they just finished acting up, they just finished doing crazy stuff. I want to say thank you to God. I don't know what God they're talking about. The Bible says by their fruits. That's why I said if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And there's a promise from the Father. And I will pray to the Father. So I got a promise for you. 
if you agape me and keep my commandments, I will pray and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. And then we jump to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and he defines that helper. He says, but you shall receive no, say, you're going to say power. You better say it with power. <laughs> and you shall receive power. power. Talk like the church of God. I'm proud to be a son of God. I don't whisper around about it. The world got to yell their announcers. I'm going to yell my truth. And you shall receive power. power. When the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Has come upon you. If you. Are going to be my child. I'm going to give you what's necessary. And I'm going to send. My Holy Spirit. And he will give you access. Somebody say I have access. He will give you access. To my power and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem in all of Judea in Samaria and unto the ends of the earth oh my God Lord Jesus so not only did I give you life, not only am I committed to that life, but now I'm going to give you resources beyond uh, your measure, beyond your control, beyond your understanding. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit that will come upon you. And when the time is necessary, you will be witnesses. What does it mean to be witnesses? To be able to testify to something you have experienced. No, somebody needs to say amen right there. How do you know a son of God? They have a testimony. How do you know a woman of God? They have something to say about God. They can tell you, I know God is real. Not by what I saw in YouTube. Not by what I saw in Facebook. Not by what somebody told me. I know who he is. I feel him. I've seen him. He's transformed me. He's changed me. There's somebody know him. There's somebody who knows him. Is there, is there somebody who knows what I'm talking about? God in this house. I don't know how many are feeling the spirit of God right now, but I feel the Holy Spirit in this house right now. It is time that the world sees that the Father is still here through us. His legacy continues through you. Oh, somebody needs to say thank you, Jesus, right there. The Father's legacy continues through us. Why? Because he has given us what is necessary. I don't need to run around chasing men and women. I have power. If my family needs prayer, I don't need to call anybody. I got two good hands. Oh, somebody know what I'm talking about right now? Stop chasing people for the power that you carry. Stop chasing titles. You have hands. You have the Holy Spirit. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You got power. No, somebody needs to wake up right now. The Father has bestowed upon you the power of heaven. But we're so insecure of who we are. I'm reminding you today that you are a son of the Father. I am reminding you today that you are a daughter of the Father. Remember who you are. Because when I leave this place, I'm going to be a witness. God will use me. God will use you to manifest his power. Where is he going to manifest his power? Jerusalem. Judea. Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. Pastor, I'm not going, I, I've never been to Judea. These are representations, and I close with this. Judea is home. That's where he came. That's where he came from. Judea is home. So he says, you're going to be a witness to me, but you're going to start at the home. Somebody say it begins in the home. Somebody say it again, it begins in the home. 
I remember this story. They told me this man was praying. He says, God, I want to go to the nations. I want to preach to the nations. He's passing and praying. I want to go to the nations. And while he's praying, God says, go buy a parachute. Man gets up, goes to the store, buys a parachute. God tells him, go rent a plane. Boy goes to the bank, gets the money out, goes rent a plane. Takes off on the plane. On the plane, he's like, God, will you tell me I'm going to jump? God, will you tell me I'm going to jump? All of a sudden, he feels the Holy Spirit tell him, jump. He opens the door. He's like, jump. She's out. I'm going to the nations. Opens up his parachute. I'm going to the nations. I'm going to the nations. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to the nations. He gets on the ground. Parachute takes it off. He sees trees and bushes. He's like, I'm in the Amazon. <laughs> he goes through the trees and bushes, and he's in his backyard. God says, start here. Those two people tell them start at home start at home the nations begins at home the nations begins with your family the nations begins with your marriage the nations begins with your children how do you want to go to the nations if you don't pray with your wife how do you want to go to the nations if you're not praying with your husband how do you want to be a witness if your children have not seen what a son and a daughter can do of god at home in Judea. Amen. I'm sorry, Jerusalem. Then Judea. Judea is the neighborhood. The neighborhood. Does your community know Christ? Through you. Does your community know Christ? Through you. Samaria. Samaria, those who don't like us, the Jews and the Samarians, they didn't get along. But we got to preach to everybody. Touch your neighbor, tell them, preach to everybody. Those that like you and those that don't like you. They have the problem, not me. I have agape. My love is unconditional. And then I can go to the nations. Jerusalem. Home, Judea, the community, Samaria, those who don't agree with us, and to the ends of the nation. Amen. To the ends of the nation. This is all we can do when we realize that the Father loves us. John tells us, look at the type of love that the Father has given us. Today, I want to encourage you to leave your burdens on this altar. I don't want you to leave here with that depression. I don't want you to leave with that hurt. Today, we let it go. Touch two people. Tell them, today, we let it go. Come on, tell them, tell them, today, we let it go. I'm not going to continue to carry this pain. I'm not going to continue to carry this hurt. Today, we let it go. Why? Because the Father loves me and his love is enough. The second thing I challenge you to do is that as we leave here, there is somebody else that needs the love that you have. There is a family member that needs to receive what you have. There is a friend that needs to receive what you have. There is a colleague at work that needs to receive what you have. There is a fellow student in your school that needs to receive what you have. This love has to be shared because the same pain you're going through, somebody else is going through. But today you receive healing. Today you receive restoration. So go out and restore and heal somebody else. Let us stand on our feet. Let us bow our heads. Spirit of God, I thank you, my God. For you have reminded us today, Lord, that you are our Father, that you love us, my God. That you have given us life, that you're committed to that life, and you will give us what is necessary. So I pray right now, Lord Father God, that you, Lord Father God, touch every mind and every heart and every soul in this place, my God. 
Father God, that those that are in need, Lord Father God, receive what is necessary. Those who need strength, my God, receive strength. Those who need healing, receive healing. Those who need restoration, receive restoration. Spirit of God, those that need renewing, receive a renewing, my God. Spirit of God, I pray over every single person in this house. I feel your Holy Spirit walking in the midst of us right now. Feel, feel that touch. Feel that touch of the Holy Spirit. Feel that touch of the Holy Spirit. Feel that touch of the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart and feel him embracing you right now. Oh, Spirit of God, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I want you to let it go, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is. If there is a life here today that after hearing this message says, I want to receive Christ as my Savior. That Father that you're talking about, I want him in my life. If that's you today, I don't want you to walk out of here the same. This is an opportunity to change your life. If you're ready to open your heart and receive Christ, we want you to come up. We want to pray with you today. If somebody says, I want to open my heart to Jesus, feel free to come up to the altar and we will pray with you and you will receive new life and new hope and you will be cleansed and God, God will do great things in your life. If there's a life that wants to receive Christ, the altar is open. I do a second calling. That first calling is open. I do a second calling. If this message has spoken to your life and you said, God, I don't want to walk out with this hurt. I don't want to walk out with this pain. I want to give it to you. I want you to come up here. And I want you to symbolically come up here and say, God, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. I'm letting my pain go. I'm letting this depression go. I'm letting this hurt go. I'm learning. I'm letting go, Lord Father God, of these scars that I carry in my spirit. Come on. Come on. The altar is open. The altar is open for everybody and anybody that says, God, I bring it to you today. You can't keep carrying it by yourself. You can't keep hurting by yourself. But God says, if you come to me, I have a love that will heal. I have a love that transforms. I have a love that will change your life forever spirit of god in the name of jesus yes yes come on just let it go in the altar let it go in the altar let it go in the altar and i want you to tell him tell him god i give it to you god i give it to you god i give you this pain i want you to call it by name i want you to call it by what it is God, this depression, I give it to you. God, these scars, I give it to you. God, this anxiety, I give it to you. God, this confusion, I give it to you. God, this loneliness, I give it to you. Come on, you call it, call it, speak it. Speak it out of your soul. Speak it out of your spirit. You're not going to grab on to me anymore. Father God, I pray. As you talk to God there, we pray together. Father God, I present to you every person in this altar right now. And I ask you, Lord Father God, not my hand, but your hand, my God. They don't need a touch from me, my God. They need a touch of your power. Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, break every chain, my God. Tear down every wall, my God. Father God, those scars are healed, Lord Father God. That burden is removed, my God. There is emotional healing, my God. Spirit of God, there is spiritual healing happening right now. There is renewance, my God. There is freedom of mind, Lord Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you heal body, mind, and spirit. Holy Spirit of God, Lord Jesus, what man has not been able to do, what medicine has not been able to do, Lord Father God, what science has not been able to do, Lord Father God, your Holy Spirit, my God, touches right now.
and we believe in the name of Jesus. We believe in the name of Jesus. Somebody call out the name of Jesus. We believe in the name of Jesus. Come on, speak his name. Spirit of God, we speak in the name of Jesus right now. Believing that the power of God still saves. Uh, believing that the blood of Jesus uh, still heals, my God. Believing, Lord, for the God that you still manifest uh, the gifts of the Spirit in this time. It says, your church, my God. These are your children, my God. And we believe you for testimonies. We believe you for the power of God. We believe, Lord Father God, that you shall do it. Somebody say, I believe it. Somebody say, I believe it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise knowing that he's working. I want you to praise him knowing that he's doing something new in your heart. I want you to praise him knowing that something is changing in your spirit. I want you to praise him knowing, knowing that God has turned the page and is a new chapter beginning right now. Spirit of God, I thank you. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, because I know you did it. And when we leave here, we live here under that covering, under that power, under that spirit, because his hand is enough. Because the Father loves me. God bless you. God keep you pastor with us. Let Reverend Julio Rios know that you appreciate, amen, this powerful ministry, amen. What a word we received today. The Father loves us with an uncomparable love, the same love that we are called to share with one another. So let's go ahead and pray, amen, and thank God for this wonderful blessing he's given us today. And above all things, commit to have that word be made flesh from Monday through Saturday. And we regather next Sunday, amen. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word that you have deposited in us thank you because of what you have done today you know our needs and we thank you because you supply them you minister to them we don't leave this place empty-handed we leave this place lord with tools with revelation with anointing with a divine assignment to show others what you have shown us. So we thank you, Lord, even those who are watching through Facebook Live, Lord. Thank you because you have touched them and ministered to them. And you have begun an ongoing work in us. And you'll perfect it until the day of Christ. So bless each family as they return to their homes, Lord, under your grace and your protection. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you.